Episode 155. We back. Like we never left. During this blessed month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, you know. It's been a very blessed Ramadan. We're doing this podcast. In this holy month, inshallah, come out on, on Eid. So Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, Eid Mubarak to everyone who's uh, participating in this uh, blessed month of Ramadan. I pray Allah answers all your duas and continues to shower y'all with, with his blessings. So, and yeah, Ramadan Mubarak and Eid Mubarak. How you feeling, Dwayne? <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. But before we get into that, we got to shout out the pot. We got to shout out the Patreon and stuff because this is a, a, an epoch yeah. in Hella Black. We're going to talk about a lot of a lot of Hella Black history today. Um, and as y'all who have been following us for a long time, you probably just gonna be able to relate to a lot of this but before I'm like, yeah, we'll just get right into it i'm gonna <laughs> talk <laughs> man because we ain't been on this podcast i know, I, like, know. Man, I know i don't care don't go to our patreon don't go to soundcloud just listen to it right now but we nah. need it hey you know what's wild <laughs> go though? to our soundcloud though i was um go to our patreon yeah i was i was looking at a podcast recently um and i was looking at i mean it's a super big podcast right and just seeing like how many ratings they got then i realized how many ratings we have so i just first want to say thank y'all huh. um Bro, I, I really am grateful for this podcast. It's, I mean, it's, of course, it's wild because I was having a rough day. And I would have to assume it's because of prayer and now this podcast. I just feel a lot better. But uh, no, I feel hell lighter. You know, like, I just feel like, I don't know, I feel emotional right now talking about this. But um, I just want to say thank you all to anyone who supported our podcast. I, I think um, I feel there's like a duality that I'm feeling in, uh, as I reflect on the podcast, right? Um, is that we've been blessed enough to where the podcast is just but one vessel of means of organizing and expression and education that we have been allotted as organizers. You know, like there have been so many organizers before, so many organizers right now who just do not have resources, you know? And so I think that the fact that we have a platform, as they say, a platform that um, people can break bread to and listen to just like yeah people that people that engage with us you know whether it's just like i've seen their ratings i'm like man i think we have i don't want to i think it was like 900 or something yeah, was over it 900. On, uh, just on apple on apple podcast on apple right podcast. you're like 900 and some ratings i'm like man that's just 900 people I'm, I'm sure all of them not positive but uh 900 people whoever like there's a lot of positive ones on there but people just taking the time to engage with us in this way i, I appreciate it um uh, all the folks that show love and yeah i'm just I'm just grateful for y'all, and it does come with an ask, you know, if you haven't uh, shared the podcast, or haven't uh, given the podcast a rating or a comment on Apple or Spotify, please do so. Um, if you have the ability to, please support our Patreon, patreon.com backslash Hella Black Pie, and yeah, man, I'm just, I'm very grateful for the folks that have supported, again, very grateful for the folks that have supported our podcast over the years. You know, um, it's been what? How long? Because our first podcast episode was recorded in January or December of of like twenty fifteen. Twenty sixteen, I believe. Or was it twenty sixteen? Um, yeah, so we just had a recent birthday, is what I'm saying. You know, like we just we've there's been within the last four months very, the podcast. Yeah, our very first podcast. Yeah, when when was it? It was in this the, year. No, oh, of, in, general. Uh, in general of twenty sixteen, like, June first, twenty sixteen. June first. Okay, so yeah, in a couple months we're gonna have. Eight years since, whoo, bro, that's cr- oh my god! Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We we are definitely Eight some years? veterans in this podcasting game, especially when it comes yeah. down to new African podcasters. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got a podcast now, but like we yeah. we we damn near some we some vets. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. You know, been eight years in Ooh. this game. You know, making uh, I'd say a lot of evolution uh, personally. You know, I think honestly, if I'm reflecting, I'm like that's. Like, yeah, the podcast is great, and to see our evolution as thinkers, but I just think about all the way we've, we've evolved as human beings through this podcast. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's actually pretty wild, because, you know, a lot of people talked about this podcast, like, oh, you know, it's healing for them to hear two black men come and talk and do these things and be vulnerable or whatever, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I think reflecting now, as I reflected more upon it, I was like, bro, we've grown a lot, bro. As individuals, and I think that's, you know, 
uh, of course, the things, the impact we've had with other people is important. I think we always center that, but I think too, it's important to un- understand the impact we've had on ourselves as individual people and how, you know, mm-hmm. I feel through this podcast, bro. So yeah, I appreciate you and the, and the brotherhood, bro. Not saying love you, bro. I mean, love you too. What I, that's what I was kind of alluding to earlier in terms of like folks who have followed us, yeah. uh, who have uh, been listening to the podcast for the last few years. Like, I think they've been able to. I mean, if all things are centered around politics, like seeing our political growth, right, and how that manifests in our daily lives, you know, um, yes, yeah, wow. Because I mean, you go from what we was. If this was almost eight years ago, you was twenty two when we started. Like twenty three when we started the podcast. I was twenty four. <laughs> you know, like, Fresh out of college, bro. You know, like it's man. Um, I'm I'm very grateful, but appreciate all y'all support. Not nah, um, for real. All the loyal people who listened over the years, you know, that'd be wild, though. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like people will remember things that I don't even remember. And I said it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you said this on this episode. I said, for real? <laughs> it's been folks who I don't been, even know if I agree, but. <laughs> yeah. It's been folks who've been patrons probably since our since we started Patreon. Like, folks yeah. who've been giving us $5 a month at, for, 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 you know, for, eight years. Like, man. Appreciate that, y'all, man. Oh, without for question. Real. Like, you know, like. <laughs> and y'all should know, y'all money is going to support me. People's programs supporting hella black supporting the community. You know, like this is a uh, that's that's one thing I value about the about the pod a lot, and uh, even upon my own self reflection, is that and we talk about political education being with a like a torch, right? Being something that can clear your path uh, and allow you to take, I guess, like more refined, more polished, more impactful actions. Um, and so, yeah, I'm. I, I'm grateful for the fact that this space has allowed us to gain an analysis that then allows us to go out and uh, impact the world around us. You know, because I look back and there's a lot of people who I've been following for a long time on, let's say, like Twitter, because like Twitter was a big instrument for my for what I, for my political education. Uh, part of it was like pseudo political education, um, but some of it I actually have learned a lot from that from that app, but. There's people who I've been following for a long time who are either who are presenting as if they're like developing an uh you know a revolutionary uh analysis, but have either just continue to participate in, in integrationist politics or continue to just be like armchair folks, yeah. you know, who like fully have the ability to go outside and get busy, but when I yeah, say get like busy, I mean, people, like, lower level stuff, yeah, you know? Now, when like, you still see people acting like it's 2016, like, <laughs> and having the same conversations on Twitter. And just still tweeting. In you feel me? Like, is still talking the same way, and, like, 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 ugh. It's just kind of sad, you know? <laughs> so I'm glad that I think the the number one thing, if I could say I would want somebody to take away from this pop, um, is that use what you learn to go do something. You know, I... I the number one thing that yeah, what we can see upon our own podcast is that the conversations that we have on here amongst each other are carried over into the cadre and then manifested through the programs. You know, and so I, I just I'm thankful that we have had this platform that have, has allowed us to work through uh, processes and methodologies and analysis together, and then have an organization that can also be a I guess like a material for lack of a better words, like playground, you know, you know? Where, we, where we put it all into play. Uh, it's special. Yeah. No, it's uh, I think that's the one thing that the spirit of Ramadan uh, brings upon us is a state of reflection, you know, mm-hmm. and because you know with Ramadan it's slowing you down and really make you look at yourself and your life in a different way. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I think. Just reflecting upon the podcast and, you know, it's like, even right now, you know, we, we send in, you know, T.R. Wright is this article of us, you know what I'm saying? That when we just started off, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And he's used to recording youth radio and <laughs> I think at that point it was like, oh yeah, you know, they've amassed 30,000 plays on SoundCloud and it's like, okay, we over at M now, you know, but just to see the growth, you know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> Who knows what's in that cup right yeah, next at, to at this me. time at this time this was written in twenty eighteen. We only so it probably got written in twenty seventeen and then came out because it came out January twenty eighteen. We had nine episodes at that time. Yeah. Nine episodes. Now we 
you know, over 150 episodes, yeah. Tales of the Town, film, art exhibit. All from that, bro. Book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Album. Mm-hmm. And panels. Good, bro. Lectures. All really that came from the podcast, bro. You know what I'm saying? I still vividly remember that day walking down Ashby like, man, I just came back from New York, man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Got to do this pie. So, all right, bet. You know, that's a lot of, uh, I think it's just the power when you decide you want to do something and sticking with it for real and having the right intention. You know what I'm saying? Like, even back then, I feel like we had the right intention. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know personally, obviously wasn't where I wanted to be, you know, in terms of. My reflecting about like oh my past self like okay yeah there's changes mm-hmm. I needed to make in my mm-hmm. life which I'm do we love I made a lot of those changes right uh, but just seeing that reflection and the growth from where we started to where we are now I think it's just uh, when you have that right intention you know what I'm saying then you get active and get busy and you know turn that idea into a, a material reality uh, only good could come from it you yeah. know. I think it speak to the power of shit. Really, education too, because what happens? I, I saw something. I saw somebody doing something like, oh, what is this? Is a, a podcast. Learned, we learned what it is. We learned how to put it together. Uh, and we put it into practice. You know, that's what happens when you, you take the time to learn something and then uh, try to put forth, try to put forth what you learn. And again, in terms of like, man, those first, if you look at our first few live podcasts, you know, we went from, yeah, those first few live podcasts, like, not so much, I mean, I think it's a byproduct of whatever information we'd be exposed to at that time in terms of analysis, but, you know, like, ha- drinking before everyone, you know, <laughs> I think it comes with being young, too, and, uh, but, yeah, they definitely have come a very long way. Huge, bro, like, very for real, way. like, we used to really get loaded and this ain't coming from no like holier than now. I think it's just, I don't know, personally, the way I be thinking about it a lot of times is like how much I used to promote negative behavior. Uh, I was going to say, I'm kind of embarrassed. I'm going to be You feel me? It's, it's, you. it's not holier uh, yeah. I'm actually just embarrassed. Well, yeah, you look, I mean, that's just maturity, though. Yeah. You know, you're looking back on your, you know, my, hey, man, like, I was But context is everything. You know, but I think, like, hey, you know, uh, like, shoot, what, what? used to promote you know what i'm saying used to promote patronacy and stuff like that like yeah. <laughs> you feel me so if i could have promoted that back then and i'm like looking through my old photos of my instagram with me holding the bottle it's like okay i could talk about my sobriety at least you know what i'm saying even in the show mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying we would get loaded and then record and go to lake cheval <laughs> you know what i'm saying but now it's like oh man we sober you know what I'm saying? Like thinking about us, bro. Like we sober right now, bro. Uh, that's we also happens when you go from a boy to a man. You, you know, don't feel me? Like, like... <laughs> you know, but like, that's actually like a lot of because you look at sometimes people just stay doing the same thing, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like we could have easily stayed doing the same thing, you know. So that's why I'm, I'm just proud of both of us in, in choosing. You know, I think again it comes back to education because once you know better, you're presented with the opportunity mm-hmm. uh, to do better. You know, and I think a lot of times once we know better. Uh, we do our best to do better, you know. You still might fall short, you know. But I think it's just, just think about that, bro. And like, we used to get loaded. And now we both here fasting, yeah, and recording. Yeah. Like, that's like actually insane to compare. Alhamdulillah, you know. But the the reason why I feel embarrassed is like when you think about the positioning and contextualizing of ourselves that we were doing right. Like, I think about even our live podcast, the New Parish. You feel me? Like, what you essentially had was two co-founders of a community organization that were supposed to be presenting like guidance and analysis to a people who were drunk like that's like that's like sad bro you feel like that's like you know and not to and yeah we built it it grew into something very real like i'm not like we were just there were some positive like everything has positive contradictions you know positives in it but there was also you know it was like, like look dang, back at looking that. back on that, that's insane. Like that's just like that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah you know, dangerous. like we got up here and then we had so many kids listening to us. Yeah. So what are we promoting to the kids? What are we of like to what the a revolutionary, youth? what a community organizer looks people, like, especially you know being fresh out of a BSU was like, oh they doing this and doing that. It's like oh man, you ain't you ain't giving them proper guidance. Bro, we were actually going to colleges, bro. And and that's not to say that the analysis, like you know, we were all. 
I the swear. analysis was good, you know, to, but yeah. like, what, what type of example are we sitting like somebody yeah. drunk talking about, yeah, these capitalists, these neoliberalists, and I'm up here literally engaging in very neoliberal behavior. I swear on the writer, it was Chick fil A in Hennessy. <laughs> you know? Like, to go in and talk to some 18 year old kids around, like, this is how y'all need to be serving y'all community, and I'm drunk. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just dangerous. Yeah, like, for sure. You know, it's, it's very like that's why I sound embarrassed. And again, like hey, you you can't be embarrassed no more though, man. You yeah, know yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> I got that off me, but you know, but I you feel it, but hey, but that's I don't know. For me, I just feel that responsibility to do better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel the responsibility. Okay, if I could could have promoted that, now I got to promote this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, why did I not question promoting that? But then sometimes I question, like, oh, am I coming off the wrong way if I'm promoting? Sobriety. I mean, intention is if intention I'm is everything. Our intention wasn't to mislead people. No, it wasn't. You know, like our intention was actually did. good. Like we finna come up here and we about to speak yeah. the truth, and it, it was the truth to some extent. But like, yeah. you know, again, that is just very, very dangerous. And again, we talk about everything having contradictions. Like we did a lot of great organizing work, you know, like in the midst of all that, you know, provided free COVID nineteen testing to the community before the county did, mm. you know, uh, yeah. providing. Thousands of meals. We did a lot of great. You know, work. we did, but it's but just again, it's a way to struggle. If you, you actually know? analyze it, you know, it's like you got to be real with yourself around. Hey, yeah. man, we just kind of just catting. Yeah, it's like you, know? you can do positive things and cat off at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But again, I think through that, it's uh, again the education aspect. If we understand how to struggle, you know what I'm saying? Like ultimately, it's like all right, we're doing all these good things for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? We're doing great things for the program, great things for the community, but then we're actually having negative actions towards ourselves. Because ultimately, and towards other people, if you think about it, like if we're promoting something that ain't good for us, and we're doing something good for us, we're also promoting that to other people in some ways. You know what I'm saying? Post up with a bottle or something. You feel me? It's like that's promoting something to some kids or something. You feel me? Like, but we was being just, I was being so, my statements, (laughs) I was being self destructive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then talking about self determination, you feel me? So it's like our self determination Backwards. for the community, but I'm being self destructive to myself. Backwards. In the name of what liberation? Liberation for who? I'm trying to liberate the community, but I won't liberate myself from my own lower desires. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? From my own vices, uh, my own addictions. It's a contradiction. If we're truly talking about liberation, freeing the land. Truly talking about independence, can we, you know, become independent of of our own uh, self destruction? But Allah knows best because experience is the best teacher. Come to Allah. That's because why I'm, of, I'm grateful. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But because of what we've been through, it's like now we can relate to a whole generation of people. Yeah. You know, like there's just like it's more people who do this than who don't. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's nah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just the reality. Like, and there's so. there's people who can still like who can. I think now it's like it gives the it gives the it creates the possibility, at least. It doesn't. It's not like a, a definite, but it gives people at least the possibility. Like, okay, if they can change, so can I. Like, there's like, you know. And I think the thing that I that I value about my experiences is it, it's made me very empathetic as well. Mm-hmm. I think what happens sometimes is like when folks can't relate to. You know, I'm gonna use the word right now. You know, we just been having talks around this for so much. To, quote unquote, relates to any given culture. Uh, they it, they messages don't be landing with the people, you know. But it's because hey, like I know how to talk to somebody because I've been in that space before. You feel me? Like I'm not even with the, you know, even if I wanted to have a conversation, if I wanted to get somebody to stop drinking, I know how I would go about it, you know. And it would I wouldn't even have a conversation mm-hmm. of sobriety first. You feel me? Like you know, I would just introduce them to another way. Of, you know, like it's just certain ways yeah, I would yeah. go about it because I know exactly, you know. Yeah, no, I think you were sober for a whole year before I got sober. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you. It's I just know how to give it to people. Yeah, I mean that's why, like you were saying, like a lot is the best of planners. And I think, for me personally, I feel like a lot decreed for me to go through certain struggles, to go through certain things, to experience life in certain ways, to make me a have more understanding of other people. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if I lived a certain way and I know what the mindset I was in during that time period, like you said. You can relate to someone in a whole different way of someone who might not have experienced that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Because if you ain't been through something, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard for you to then be able to 
help lead people to something that might be different. You know, if you even think about, like, I think one of the greatest examples we have is Malcolm. El Haj Malik El Shabazz. He went through so many different personal transformations, and in many ways that was a law's decree for him to be Detroit Red. That was a law's decree for him to be Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? It was a law's decree for him to then transform into El Haj Malik El Shabazz. But through him going through all those different life stages, those personal transformations, he then was able to understand how to A, best resonate with the people, Mm -hmm. and B, help people change the conditions of themselves to reach their highest form because of going through that. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's even a, you know, even if you think about it, uh, Islamically, it's like, originally, alcohol wasn't haram. But that was later on revealed. So even if you think about that time period, like that was happening in that time period, and then Allah's not said, oh, this is haram. This is forbidden. But some people in that time period knew what it was like to experience that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like similarly now, it's like, okay, we knew what it was like to experience it. We made changes in our life, and now we know how to, uh, inshallah, best help support people to, you know, uh, being better for themselves. And being better in the community, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and not coming off no holier now, but this is just a uh, all 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 signs point to there's a proper way to struggle. Yeah, I th- there are two things that come up consistently throughout the Quran, right? Grace and reason, right? What can make you more graceful? I, th- I think having grace with someone is a direct byproduct of empathy. Right? What is empathy based uh, based off of? Like empiricism, like lived experience. I think I think. Uh, Lived experience is something that allows you to be more rational, right? Like, it isn't always the basis for rationalism, right? Like, there are some things you should just know. Like, I can look at a fire and know it's hot, and or I can know not to touch a fire, right? To You know, like, without having been burned, I just think it's hot. I've been told it's been hot. Or you watch other people, right? Like, there's just different ways to, I guess, like, gain reason. Um, but I think, again, if you go back to what made Malcolm someone who could be so graceful and so rational, using his ability for reason was through all his lived experience. Uh, I think, especially with us trying to create a strong youth cadre, like we're going to have to be able to know what moved them and what they've experienced, right? Like, so yeah. Because you could easily turn into them old niggas and be like, man, man, them youth, man, they so lost, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, they doing all this. They doing this new dad. They doing, rather than understanding like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Having a certain understanding. I mean, even amongst and our own peers, able- though. You know, like it's not, it's not, it's it's yeah. people in our our own peers who yeah. we have, who we have to struggle with in terms of a uh, trying to get them to recognize, you know, uh, what is actual. Like you were getting that earlier. What is actual self determination? What is actual liberation? Whose morale and ethos am I living by? Like I think we're not. We can't. We've reached a point, quote unquote, the left or whatever, black nationalist, pan-Africanist, we are at a point in the struggle, in the movement, where like we need to actually clarify what the West is and what their culture is, right? And like how we've been able what to What their put, values is, what you know? their mor- quote-unquote morality, morality is, what their quote-unquote uh, humanism is. We have to understand that. We, well, there's a very... What their secularization is, what their religion is, what, yeah, you know? We just have a very limited scope of what the West is and how it has how it's penetrated itself into all elements of our life, right? And so I think uh, what we've been able to do a good job of is ground ourselves in what Malcolm said, right? Where he says, who taught you how to hate yourself? We're just trying to start having conversations around what is this? Who taught you what this is, right? And I think that's just ha- that happens to be the uh, time period that we find ourselves in as a byproduct of uh, you know, neo colonial neo colonial subjugation and where the new African independence movement and the Pan African subjective currently finds itself in yeah. the twenty first century. Yeah. So I know we've uh kind of just dove deep into it very organically and mm-hmm. naturally, you know, but uh, I wanted to ask you like how's this Ramadan been for you? I mean, you know, I uh me and you have already talked about this a few times, then of course uh folks who are hip to my shahada uh, are asking me, you know, what's, I think folks who knew that I did Ramadan last year and then folks who are hip to my shahada are asking me uh, what's like been the biggest differences. And I mean, number one is a declaration of faith, right? Um, 
so you do doing that's like even the conversations like I'm just I'm yeah, I'll be trying to be careful because the number one thing I didn't like was when I felt like niggas was trying to reinforce like force religion on me so I'll be trying to be careful about how I present it to people because I'm like I don't want to be one of them type of niggas right but I mean hey I ask for guidance with my tongue right now but I would say that there is a big difference between doing Ramadan as a non-Muslim and being and doing Ramadan as a Muslim. I don't even care if you're praying. You feel me? Like, of course, number one thing is like I wasn't praying. I wasn't a Muslim last year when I did Ramadan, and I wasn't praying. But I mean, I've never I've prayed. I've never done like because um, we got non-Muslims that pray with us, right? Like who are doing Fajr, who are doing uh, Maghrib and Isha, you know, like who are doing. I've never done that as a non-Muslim, but just based off all the Muslim, all the Islamic things that I was doing as a non-Muslim, I just like, there's just a different feeling once you do it, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So all I have to assume, even though I've prayed uh, to God, not the way that Muslims pray, but like, it's just, there's a different, it's different, you know, it's a different feeling, yeah. period, point blank. Um, so I would say like prayer is different. Uh, of course, you have the declaration of faith and then going to the mosque. You know, the first time having my first Jumas, like all these things just, um, and I, yeah. And I was like, the Ummah is the biggest thing too. It's like an actual community. Like my Shahada was probably the most intimate male experience I've ever had in my life, you know? Um, and I, I got a lot of men in my life. Of course, played sports my whole life and you know how the locker room is, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. like, that ain't. You know that yeah. ain't under God. Even if you know you went to De La Salle, you yeah. know, but it's still like it ain't it ain't under God though. You know, like Straight up. it ain't it ain't the same feeling. You say oh, it just ain't the same feeling, bro. Even though y'all might have y'all unity and y'all working towards the same goal and y'all y'all really shedding blood, sweat, and tears yeah. together, nigga. Shahada was the most intimate thing with amongst is yeah amongst men I've ever done, and it's definitely one of the top like communal experiences I've ever had uh I think because it's so I'm like I don't want to downplay any of the things that I've done like with my family and stuff like that I could think of like birthdays and shit funerals yeah. and stuff you know but like that is just gonna always have a very special place in my heart but uh yeah I've just been enjoying praying bro honestly uh I, I really enjoy praying um, I really enjoy going to the mosque, especially where we went last Friday. Um, the imam was just saying some very powerful stuff. So yeah, I, I say Juma, Shahada, uh, making Salat. These have all been uh, some of, I, I say, like the top experience I've had during Ramadan. For sure. Man, I'm doing not, man. It's like <laughs> even just hearing you talk about it again, it just makes me emotional, bro. Nah, it's, you know it's uh it's, it's deep, <laughs> bro. The whole week up to Shahada, bro, I could not stop crying. Yeah. Like I would just be, bro. It was every bro, the single most, day. No, I would for, just for be real, crying, bro. It was crazy. For real, it's like uh, the most I've like cried as like has been as a Muslim. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like to really. Sometimes cry, but not even be like, you know, like a boo-hoo type of cry. But it's just like, you just get emotional. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I feel like Shahada just opens your heart up in different ways to allow you to be more vulnerable. Uh, at least for myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To where it's just like, okay, I could experience these things. I could feel emotions in a different type of way. You feel me? But, nah, bro. I'm just, uh, I'm proud of you, bro. I know it's been a journey. It's still, yeah. the journey still is, is continuing. You know, uh, but just to see again, like you've seen my transformation Mm -hmm. and I've seen your transformation, you know what I'm saying? That's like the beautiful aspect of like the brotherhood that we have, bro. Mm -hmm. It's like for us both to see it happen at, you know, in different times and different ways and different experiences and just even the way that, uh, you know, this Ramadan obviously different from last Ramadan, but like the way our like relationship has changed. <laughs> I mean, it's impossible to you pray feel with somebody just, and not get closer. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, but <laughs> like, just but thinking, of, I don't know, bro. Like you think about how fast, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's like, all right, you took shot in Ramadan, but like, obviously, you picked up on things so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? To where it's just like, this is normal. 
Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like it don't feel. You know what I'm saying? Praying with you feel normal. Y'all also you know haven't realized how short of a time period it's been. It's, it's been only, such a short yeah, time. Even, Ramadan, <laughs> but it feels over. like, you know what I'm saying? Ramadan ain't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you ain't even experienced Eid yet. As I'm yeah. saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, alhamdulillah. So it's just, uh, you also taking shahada, it's like, uh, people would always, and I never really, there's certain lessons that I'm getting in it mm-hmm. from myself. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Or like certain things that I'm seeing differently now because of you taking shahada. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember taking shahada and people hey man I'm trying to be close to you man like you just took shahada like man you mm-hmm. you, you peer on my like, man yeah nah I know how to feel I'm like man I'm trying to be close to this bro man he got less sin on him <laughs> man like <laughs> you know yeah. uh, so it's a it's a bunch of blessings bro and being able to pray cause that's that's really what's most important you know what I'm saying is it, making them prayers you know and uh to be able to pray with you bro it's like it's a uh, Bring me to tears, bro. Bro, my mama's out. Like, like, we like, did some, like, yeah, like, yeah, for like, real. I'll be reciting the prayers sometimes and like really be smiling, bro, because yeah. I'm like, I'm praying next to my brother, bro. Yeah, and it's I'm, like, I got yeah. I, almost tears coming. I'm like, trying, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Hold on the back because I still gotta <laughs> recite yeah, nah, the prayers. Nah, trust me, bro. Time, I, I know bro. how I be, bro. You know, because it's like too for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been praying alone for the most part in the house when I'm at the house. You know, so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's changing my even like the spirit of the house feel different, bro. Yeah, for sure, without question. You walk in, it just feel. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm just grateful for Allah. And, uh, I'm grateful for you, bro. No, same. I mean, I, I hope that, you know, I pray that everybody I love gets to experience something like this, you know? Like, the feeling that, that I've had. Um, and it's, it's helping me realize, like, what community really is, you know? Like, even if you got like okay your birthday if you look at the Jerusalem uh pop up that we did uh like it's still these very communal uh like they're the they're the same kind of communal events that we've been having but like you got groups of people praying together before in the middle of them after you know it's just like it's that's what real community and unity I would say look like. You know, and I've been in spots like where I you know, like been in a club, like we didn't been we didn't did like communal things together, you know what I'm saying? Like but it ain't you know, it's just and like no, it's, it's different. When y'all come it's, together for something positive, bro. I mean the only thing I can say is like when you come together for God. Like that's the that's, only that's, that's the only thing I can say that's missing come, from you from come those in, things, you know? You're coming up for the sake of a law. You it know they allow. You know, like it ain't like we you know, we was coming together doing very uh you know, doing a lot of haram. Like Realistically, you know, like you yeah. talked about, uh, think you said like self destruction earlier, you know, like yeah, doing a lot of things wrong. that were like forbidden, just like a scientific, like not even if you took out like uh, religious decree out of it, you know, like we were just doing a lot of things that was bad for ourselves, like on a like an organic material level, like it was actually bad for you if you think about what some of the things that we did does to your body in yeah, your mind. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why that's part of the divine science from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all those things that we was doing bad from a scientific level. Could have been prevented if we just followed the Sharia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's why, I'll, like, you know, he's talking about the fire. Like, we are. You can understand. You don't got to put your hand in the fire. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because you know that's going. Uh, it's hot. It's going to burn your hand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's part of Allah's mercy. Is Allah tells us what's good for us, and Allah tells us what's bad for us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But sometimes we have to. Uh, <laughs> Go through the bad to <laughs> figure out. The I told good. you that was one thing. You I was know? like, man, I was just mad I didn't do this earlier, bro. Right, like, that was that's what I was from like, man. What took me so long? But of course, you know, we've already had conversations around. Like, you know, I was baptized at like seventeen years old. You know, uh, and I think what happens is you like you start to judge God by humans. You know, <laughs> and so like mm-hmm. that. I mean, that claim that shows you that I, that shows that I wanted a relationship with God. Uh, but then, of course, like through my own political education and starting to understand like the new African relationship uh, to Christianity, which we ain't got to go through too much on the pod or whatever. But like, I just knew that that wasn't, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, even, I think a lot of times, especially as it's like reverts, as new African reverts, like a lot of the, you know, we don't got to go into it too much, but even for myself, a lot of my trauma or religion was based off of me. Growing up 
Catholic and in a Baptist school. Mm-hmm. And like a person, I just blanketed all things. You know, my like, oh, this is this is that okay? You know, but uh, I mean, this wasn't the truth. <laughs> like it just, it, it wasn't the truth. You, you feel know? Me? like then you had the historical understanding that you get from understanding the papal decrees and the, the quote unquote doctrine of discoveries coming mm-hmm. out of the Catholic Church. And I'm like, man, I went to a Catholic high school, and these are the people that you know got all this money from enslaving African people, from enslaving African Muslims. From essentially launching a war on Islam to enslave African people and to stop the expansion of Islam, you know, that's why you know. To me, the way I look at it, a lot of times is if I'm in, the biggest way I could be anti-West is by being a Muslim. It's by being, uh, I'm following what Allah says to do, mm-hmm. because it is diametrically opposed to every aspect of Western life, every aspect. Supposed to. So to me, you know, the most revolutionary thing I could be is be a good Muslim. Yeah. You know? That's I, I would say, like, people, some folks was asking me, I mean, like, okay, what, what led to it? I'm like, okay, well, some of this stuff is, like, things that I can't necessarily explain, right? Like, it's that thing that can't be touched, that can't be touched that you can't see, right? Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of the times, even with, like, the materialist framework, right? Like, it says, like, all things are knowable, right? Like, this thing that I'm talking about, it, it, you, you can't know it. You feel me? It's a pool. It's a it's a it's a force. You feel me? And I would have to say it's, you know, God. You know, um, but then also it's very much like a lot of historical material, right? Um, a, a lot of historical material. A lot of me recognizing um, how the war on Africa, specifically the parts that probably we came from. West Africa was a was a war on Islam, right? Uh, so I think, uh, and then looking at, I be telling people all the time, like yeah. it be historical materialism that led me to Islam. You feel me? And That's it's like the historical truths that I found through the quote unquote secular sciences mm-hmm. of analysis. It all led me to Islam. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so I'm like, okay, then what what is this? So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like then you learn about it. All right, you know, <laughs> when you partner that like historical. Material, well, like lived experience, like there was a void that I felt that I'm like no material thing could like no human no, no amount of success, no achievement, no material thing could feel what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm could feel what I'm missing. Mm-hmm. You know, it c- couldn't fill it up, um, and then. Like, one day I was just like, bro, I'm about to read the Quran. You feel me? It was like two weeks before Ramadan. I was like, bro, I'm about to just try to read the Quran again. And I was just, this time I was able to, I think last time I told him, like, bro, I couldn't even get through the first, like, six pages. You feel no, me? Like, it's just like, I, I, I just wasn't feeling it. You feel me? Like, I just, I don't know. And this time I just got through it. And then I had a conversation with Left. I was like, it's, and I would say it's like the first thing I did for myself because all the only reasons why I didn't want to do it was like all things that wasn't me. Like, was okay, how is this going to impact the organization? How is my family going to feel about this? And what I'm trying to say is that you know it was <laughs> like I just wasn't worried about what other people's expectations. Yeah, you but know, that's I just really wanted to come down to because a lot of times that's what's yeah. be put upon us is other people's expectations, other people's thoughts, caring about what other people think. But you're just saying, bro, I just did it for myself. For me, it's like every time I would pray, I would just start crying. You feel me? I'm like, bro, what is this? You feel me? Like, I'll read the Quran, just start crying. If I'm like, okay, yeah, bro, this is, this ain't got nothing to do with me. You feel me? Like, I'm clearly not in control of this, you know? Um, and then someone, I think, left, like, basically asked me, like, you feel me? Like, do you believe in God? Do you believe there's only one God? You feel me? And like, of course, all the things that I know about paganism, you feel me? <laughs> and like, I, what I would consider, like, what we talk about all the time, like spiritual anarchy, like he asked me these questions and it's just like, bro, like, what do you know about Shahada? I'm like, well, I don't know. He's like, that's basically what Shahada is. You feel me? I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah. Then I had a dream. You feel me? Like, I had it like, shit was crazy. And I ain't even, I I ain't no mystic type of nigga, you know? So, like, I don't be talking about it, but I had a dream and I was like, yeah, bro, this is going down. Like, you know, like, it's, it's, <laughs> nah, it's going down, like, with, without question. I'm grateful though, bro. I've, um, uh, you said something that I was going. You said I was going to feel this when I, when Ramadan was over. Like if I wasn't careful in terms of uh, like wishing I I wish I didn't 
because of capitalism, but I wish I didn't work as much, you know, and I wish I would have slowed down a little bit. Uh, but it's all things like it's all learning experience. You know, I, I, I really wish. But then I told you, like, I respect, like, this is what happens when you don't live in a Muslim country. <laughs> you feel me? Like, That's specifically when you live in this motherfucker. Mm. <laughs> when, you, mm. when, you live, when you live in, in America post 9 11, in the mm. middle of uh, the Islamic genocide that's taking place. You know, uh, it's like I be seeing all the Muslims that's like having to like, you know, like live within the confines of the West right now and how like how hard we got to work, you know, versus like I hear stories of people who've done Ramadan in, in, in Muslim countries, you know, it's just like, man, this shit burnt, bro. No, for real. Like, it's just so ancient, I mean, bro. if you think about it from a religious perspective, we would identify America as the great Satan. So we're essentially, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we experiencing literally America in a satanic, right? And so <laughs> even if you think about like, you know, people in during Ramadan, it says, uh, you know, Satan is uh, the jinn of the Satan, of the shaitan is, uh, the, is locked up. But the physical shaitan, they still out and about. Mm -hmm. So we over here trying to practice Ramadan in the land of shaitan. And if you think about how America was founded, it was founded on everything anti-Islam. Mm -hmm. Literally, the national project of America, this nation that was created, was all at the foundation of being anti-Islam. <laughs> Literally, right? So we're trying to practice Ramadan. Like, we can't even truly practice Ramadan in the way that Allah decrees it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we do our best, mm -hmm. right? But... Uh, because we ain't free as Muslims, we ain't free as New Africans. How can we truly practice uh, uh, Ramadan in this? You know what I'm saying in in a land that is governed by by Satan. You know, like our our, our religious and spiritual development then becomes underdeveloped because of the system of Satan, the system of capitalism, the system uh, of imperialism, this uh, uh, system of Pharaoh that <laughs> transplanted from one generation to the next. Like we still living under that. You know, but yeah, inshallah, you know what I'm saying? Next Ramadan, we, you know, we, we, we make it to another Ramadan, inshallah, and then we able to make the changes that we want to make. You know what I'm saying? But then again, I don't know, this Ramadan for me is just like, we also seen what's happening to Palestinians right now. Or seeing people in like Sudan, you know what I'm saying? Only to break their fast, they have like, like literally like grasshoppers breaking their fast, bro, because of famines. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So it's also for me. I'm like, I know before, like in Sahur, so you know, I'm like, oh, I'm having protein shake, I'm having oatmeal, I'm having eggs, I'm having meat. I'm like, man, I don't need all that. You know. But yeah, I they trust like there again. We've talked about all the positive that that I've come from, but like I really been trying to wrap my mind around like what it would be like, where like your whole life is. Uh, structured around God, right? Because right now our whole life is structured around the dollar. You know, like everything, like Shirk. you know, like <laughs> our, our whole life is is yeah. structured around the dollar. You know, like every, every it, it, yeah. And so, like, what would it mean for you know, like stores opening up later, or things staying open later? Like at some of the spots that's happening, you know, like. Like when it's you, the you only see like brothers coming pockets. in from the mosque because yeah. they running from their job. You know, it's just like damn, bro. Or I'll be the meeting, like, okay, I wish I could bust down prayer right now, but like, what would this, how would this actually go? <laughs> like, or I wish I could just leave the meeting to go, you know, or you got to schedule everything, you know, just like having to combine your prayers, you know, it's just like, man, shit. I'm, you know, Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed. Yeah, we blessed, bro. Well, without question. We blessed. Um, but I do want to experience that. Oh yeah, inshallah, uh, we, uh, inshallah, I, I you know, we were able to go to a, a, a Muslim country and be able to experience that a certain way, you know, mm -hmm. because it's a uh, yeah, it's the way we, you know, so we're just spiritually. I think uh, every Muslim should be able to experience that, you know what I mean? Uh, versus being, you know, inshallah, we free the land. <laughs>
<laughs> as well. You know what I'm saying? To where we be able to experience, uh, you know. But uh, yeah, it's been. I, I've also just like felt better too. You know, like just mood wise, because that's what. I think when you get, you know, like when you have to step into that spiritual realm, like you literally have to, like, you step into that realm outside of this, it forces you, um, you, you, I don't know. A lot of the times, even with like a, like a revolutionary nationalist, let's say if you have a revolutionary nationalist ideology, uh, or you claim to be like a socialist, right? Like there still isn't like a... Like, what does it mean to believe that, like, all humans are equal? We should all be able to contribute to society. We should all be able to, uh... yeah, like, what does it mean to have, like, equity and equality? Right? Like, because you see that thing talked about, but then they're not actually materialized in the spaces in the way that folks are, folks are claimed to, right? Um, and I, I'm bringing this up to really say that what I've noticed, the difference between some of these... Um, I guess like revolutionary text that I've read in the Quran is there is like an actual program, like an actual moral and standard of like how you're at. Like this means you need to be, you need to have grace with people. You need to be fair. You need to be just. And this is what fairness and justice looks like. Because people use the, the words all the time. But then why in our spaces is there so much. But it's a secular Like review. negativity and like It's a disrespect. secular view of justice. You feel me? Because their justice isn't coming from a divine inspiration. If justice is coming from only human explanation. Rather than from the divine mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The divine justice aspect. It's always going to be lacking. You know what I'm saying? Like. To get humanism from a secular viewpoint, you're still looking for humans for the answers mm -hmm. rather than looking to a law. Mm -hmm. right? That's the thing about Islam uh, compared to the other uh, Abrahamic religions is that Islam gives a, a clear program, a clear way to live, a clear way to act. It's very distinct. The science of the halal versus the haram is very clear. Like, it leaves nothing untouched from how to go to the restroom, from how to clean yourself. You know what I'm saying? From what to eat, from what to forbid, from how to talk. You know what I'm saying? For how to have good character, for how to have mercy, for how to pray, for how to establish a political system, <laughs> for how to establish an economic system, for how to govern a nation, for how to distribute wealth. Every aspect that we look for in terms of revolution is, is in the Quran as well. Law is decreed. Even Every what, aspect. Yeah. You feel me? And then even the books, you know, like we are all liberators. That is heavily influenced by Jaleel being a Muslim. Right? The code of conduct and from on these standards. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, the, that's the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. It's like, what's on? Many ways, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't drink. Sharia law. <laughs> don't gamble Sharia law. Don't back by Sharia law. You know what I'm saying? So even the way things sometimes be secularized, this is also the influence of Islam. Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare. You don't think Nkrumah was influenced by Ahmed Seko Ture? He had to be because he wrote it while he was in uh, Karaki. <laughs> so he wrote it there while he also was reported to have a prayer rug. You yeah. feel me? Where he was also reported to, uh, he had reported to took a shahada as well. You know, so all these, the ethos of Islam, a lot of times, even for myself, right, as we study history, you begin to actually see like, oh, no, nah, the ethos of Islam was all through the rest of the earth. For not might not have just said it every single time. And, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or even if you, you probably seem like even the way you know, I've talked about Islam with you and not always said Islam. And you're probably seeing it a little bit more now, you know what I'm saying, as you go, go into your process. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Even with, you know, but I learned that from Amir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, was talk, you talk about Islam all the time without saying it. But it was always influencing me. Because you, you'll peep how, like, okay, 
we for us, right, we use New African as a political and national identity, yeah. And what New African is supposed to come? A morale, value, and practice that's completely opposed to the morales, values, and practice of the West, yeah. But even with this, like, I would still be feeling, like, all this, like, negativity, right? Like, not carrying myself as, like, as a new African, right? Like, what does it mean to actually have, like, that revolutionary favor, that revolutionary positivity, that revolutionary kindness, that revolutionary love, like, just that revolutionary energy? And you just have so many people claiming to be, quote-unquote, like, revolutionaries, revolutionary humanists, and they just, like... Got the worst attitudes. Some of the worst you know, people. They got the worst <laughs> attitudes. Like they complain a lot. They whine a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. And the Quran it says, "Don't be miserly." Right. Like you know, like it's like. And I was like reading this. I'm like, ooh, like, I'm catting. You feel me? Like it says, move from gratitude. Be, you know what I'm saying? We just got like a lot of people. I realize like, I, but I was poisoning this from like a revolutionary standpoint, right? And I would say like in them texts I be reading. And, you know, in whatever political theory, political science book you're reading, it ain't giving you that. And I done read a lot of them. I ain't read them all. But I done read a lot. You feel me? Like you get close to it, I think, in Ujamaa, where, you know, uh, Nairi is talking about, like, the kind of ethos of a socialist and, like, how to, you know, be kind and treat people. But a lot of that shit, that shit ain't coming up. A lot of niggas just analyzing that, economic systems and leaving from it at Nairi, that. From that was coming from his religious background as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he was taking his... Relig- some of his religious philosophy Like mm-hmm. yeah be good mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying But that's what I say is missing from the, from like The revolutionary nationalist spaces Or you know uh, Who at least claiming like it's like bro you just People is just negative bro Like and I would really have to check my I mean there's whole, there's whole people calling themselves revolutionary And their identity is called Afro pessimist You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. But we gotta think about again like the spiritual warfare, right? Even the way it happens, and I, I say from the both sides of the coin, what I mean is the capitalist coin and the socialist coin. Mm-hmm. Both sides, uh, at you know, are secular and engage in a, in a level of spiritual warfare that take you away from God in the name of what? Materialism, mm-hmm. the things you could f- touch, feel, right? We're experiencing a level of spiritual warfare uh, that we honestly can't fully even understand. But then you think about Fanon. Why was Fanon doing the psychoanalysis? Because he understood the spiritual warfare being enacted that the colonialist was using, that the imperialist was using. Like that's what we think about this, this scrolling on Instagram and on issues of self-worth and uh, issues of meaning and stuff like or even like the the existential crises sometimes that we'll have in life, a lot of that is because of spiritual warfare. You know what I'm saying? The the images we were seeing all the time on our phones, the way the TVs, the music, you know, it's like, bro, what? Spiritual warfare. And how do we actually have a spiritual system that is grounded? You know what I'm saying? That is really grounded by divine decree. We got to have spirit. And as, as African people, we've always had a spiritual system. We've always had it. You know? We got to have a program. <laughs> you know, you manage me all mean talks about it. Hey, you got to develop a program. Swam gives you a program. How to eat, how to pray. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In every aspect of life, we have to be very disciplined. Why wouldn't we want our spirit spiritual practice to have discipline as well? You know, as a hadith... That talks about uh, prayer and why we pray, pray five times a day. And it ain't word for word, so please forgive me. But it's uh, essentially uh, Prophet Muhammad so was someone likens prayer five times a day if he was washing yourself in the stream five times a day. Mm-hmm. If you wash yourself in the stream five times a day in a river, you're going to be clean. If you pray yourself five times a day, you're going to be clean. And, you know, those negative thoughts you might be having, okay, Oster just came in. Now it's time to pray Oster. Now you just reminded yourself, you just do voodoo, you know what I'm saying? You just prayed your four rakahs, and you might have made, you know, your extra rakahs after. After that feeling, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm reminded about me being a creation, uh, some, something that God created, and I'm serving my old, my creator. I'm taking myself away from everything else. And then when you're praying that five times a day, like, 
the bad things you might have thought about doing it become different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, I came into prayer like, man, I'm a little mad about this, 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 this. I completely forgot all about it after making forward cause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so I just, yeah. Again, we just talk about our experiences. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and I wish you I, know? I, I, I kind of damn near don't even have all the words, right? I mean, if I. I kind of don't even have all the words. It's something like you got to kind of experience yourself. I mean, the number one thing that I would give people is I would just say read the Quran. Uh, and I would say, like, you need to study uh, the war on Islam, mm-hmm. uh, especially for new Africans, right? We need to study uh, what Islam has historically meant for us, even if you think about what one of the strongest, like, chapters of the Black Panther Party was – ran by Muslims. If we talk about, uh, and I'm referring to, you know, like Lumumba, uh, Zaid, and Matulu, and Sekou, uh, if we're talking about the East Coast Panthers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you talk about the members of the BLA, a lot of them was Muslims, right? Uh, ended up becoming Muslims. If we're talking about- The RNA. You know, the RNA, you know, Muslims. If we're talking about, um, if we're talking about uh, West Africa, Right, when you referred to Ahmed Seko Toure earlier. Um, and if we talk about like what's going on right now, who are the the people that are actually challenging the nations that are challenging Western imperialism? Uh, it's a lot of Muslim countries, right? But I, I would just say, study the Quran, and I wish I I wish I had the words to to tell y'all exactly what this has been for me. But if any advice, you know, I've, I've accomplished a lot. I think like in the material world. Right, especially like before the age of what they would say, people like oh, by the age of thirty, right? Like what what things? If, like I've probably lived out like some of my like things that I prayed for, things that I've dreamed of. Um, but if I had any advice for success and what I deem success, I would say, bro, you just got to get right with God. Like I've been even talking to Prada recently, right? He was like, bro, I always felt like the thing that me and you just wouldn't get right on or couldn't align on is like God. You feel me? Like, now, I probably ain't religious, but, like, he always bringing up God, right? And he and I would just, he'd be like, bro, sometimes you wouldn't even respond. You wouldn't say nothing. You feel me? It's like, now I just feel like we can just, uh, like, bond even closer now, you know? Uh, I'm little enough. Yeah, so I would just say, if I had one piece of advice for anybody, bro, it's like, I don't know what, you pick your whatever religion you want to find, right? Because even in this, just say, like, in the book it, or in the Quran, talk about, like, the believers, right? Like you might not necessarily subscribe to Islam, you might not even subscribe to Christianity, right? But if you actually follow in the pillars of Islam, like you praying, you know, you uh, doing good deeds, you got good intentions. I don't know how you can go wrong. Allah knows best. You know, I don't know how you can mm-hmm. go wrong. But I think you got to figure out like what God is because this is a godless society by default. Straight this up, this is a godless society where we find ourselves. This is, this is you know hell on earth, arguably hell on earth, but. I've uh, enjoyed Ramadan, and I'm definitely blessed to uh, to have you. Cause this, like, you talk about if I my biggest influences over the last you know few months and allow I mean, just cause years or whatever, right? Uh, that led to this decision, right? As I have to say, like, you left and Ra, cause y'all like probably you know y'all Muslim men who I hang around the most, right? Um, but the reason why I've been able to pick up on things so so quickly is because I've just been studying y'all for so long. You know, like I've been I've been studying y'all for so long. And then even like just the way you've been able to teach me, like the last uh or this month, you know, like post my shahada, I just been able uh like you really taught me in a way that has allowed me to, you know, like even from like the first day you sharing all those apps with me. You know, like you bought me my first Quran. You feel me? And then left bought me my second Quran, you know, and uh, uh, left got me my first prayer rug, you know. So it's like y'all two have just the first person I prayed with that wasn't you was left, you know. So it's like I've actually just had like uh, that's why I said that Uma, you feel me? Like it's just people, you know, without question. It's like for us as believers, as Muslims, it's the Uma. You know, that's the the people is what's important. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's everything about like doing good in this world is about doing good for not only for yourself but other people. You know, it's like, hey, it's about 
doing good because I'm at the end of the day I'm responsible for me at the end of the day you're responsible for you or we're responsible for our own souls and that gives you a certain individual uh, commitment and an individual relationship to Allah but how do you get good deeds is by serving the Ummah <laughs> you know what I'm saying Ain't necessarily about serving yourself. <laughs> okay, yeah, pray and, and do those the aspects, the, the 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 obligations that we have as individuals, right? But what does a lot talk about? Feed the orphans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Make sure the people who are uh, who have the need are, are supported monetarily. You know what I'm saying? Like it's about the woman, it's about the people, it's about the relationships we have. That's why we pray and con- you know it's blessings to pray in con- congregation. You know what I'm saying? Like for me to. Now be praying with you every day. That's like that's blessings for both of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Versus praying alone. It's better to pray in congregation for us, especially as Muslim men. You know, so it's uh I'm 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 happy you're feeling this feeling, you know, because I, I know what the feeling is t- to my own, you know what I'm saying? Like what it feels like for me, at least, right? But just uh, I just remember the first times going to the masjid and it's like it reminded me, you know, of when and inshallah, we could experience Hajj, you know. But when uh, El Hajj Malik al Shabazz was talking about going to Hajj and seeing all these Muslims of different colors, mm-hmm. and you know, everyone was still wearing, you know, uh, uh, the white material to make the pilgrimage, you know what I'm saying? Everyone was still doing the same rituals. And if you think about it, that's like the oneness of humanity, mm-hmm. you know, how, how we're all, you know, progeny of, of Adam, right? Uh, but for me, like going into the masjid, I remember. Cause it's uh for me, I took my shot over Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> then I went to the bastard after, like you know what I'm saying. So it was like seeing all these different people of different races, all doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you have Afghans, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Africans, New Africans, Mexicans, uh, Arabs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Iranians. You have all these people all praying to Allah, and you just see the community of that. You see the interconnected nature of us as humanity, you know, uh, and that's that's what Islam is about is humanity, you know. Uh, the same word for word, but Imam Ali said, you know, if we ain't uh, essentially if we ain't brothers in religion, we're brothers in humanity. Mm-hmm. That's what Islam is about is a humanity and about. Uh, I think the best part about I can't even say the best, but one of the greatest parts about Islam is that I think for me, I found my humanity. And I found my humanity in, in the way I feel like Allah, Allah uh, wanted it to be. You know, so like, to, like that, that's some revolutionary thing. Yeah. To be able to find your humanity. You know, because a lot of times that's really what we are searching for is our yeah. actual humanity, bro. Yeah. And like as African people, as new Africans, we've been dehumanized so much. So much to levels of like. We can't even explain, bro. Like, you think about what we call animals, all types of things, bro. But then to actually find your humanity under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's something that no one can take away. You could subject us to whatever you might, whatever these oppressors, whatever these shaitans want to subject us to, but you can never take away our humanity. And then Allah makes that clear in the Quran. You, They try to rid us from this world. The martyr can't take away the humanity of a martyr. <laughs> Martyr's still alive. Unless we even know it. You know, so it's a... Hey, I'm just a... It's been a blessing this Ramadan, bro. <laughs> it's been a very blessed Ramadan. Yeah, and it's like... I don't know, like... So I feel like I found my humanity in the, in the same way, but also in, like, a different way in terms of, uh, like... I don't know if this is if I should say humanity or I should say, like, my humanness. I don't know if those are synonyms or... Mm. Um, but... You know, like the thing about uh, materialism, which is the um, philosophy of the West, right? Materialism is the philosophy that governs the West, right? Not, and you might not hear Joe Biden get up and talk about, or you might not hear like the Democrats and Republican parties talk about like materialism as philosophy, right? But like, not the materialism that people talk about like cars and clothes and shoes, but like actually this thing where you have to dominate nature and make it bend to your will. Right, like I found the humanity in the sense that like we are not the center of the universe. Like we don't control everything. So like with that, it's like taking off this pressure off me. You know, like and 
Like it's that the God complex that the West gives you. Like, the, sure. you know, we talk the about it. Nature, you know what I'm saying? It's the like, main character syndrome. Like we what? talked about the type of stuff before, right? So but that's I, part of finding your humanity. That's what I'm saying. Submission to a law is like understanding your position. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I found it in that way to where it's like when you realize like this thing isn't all that's to it. That in itself is a very revolutionary and, and liberating feeling because. Mm-hmm. The West benefits off you being consumed mm-hmm. with this reality, right? I mean, because if you're consumed with this reality and you not think about the afterlife, you'll do whatever you can for this one. You'll 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 think this is like the primary thing. And then I'll also say that uh, so I wanted to say like, okay, thinking about understanding that this is finite. That you know, I guess what if we talk about the materialist framework that matter is primary uh or what you were saying made me think like the materialist people just bought into this reality of this life Mm -hmm. uh in many ways this for us as believers is this is a finite but they treat this life like it's infinite Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and like the dunya right this life for us is just a step to the next to the Mm -hmm. acura to, to the next life you know so for us, the Acura, the, the next life, the afterlife, that's what's infinite. You know what I'm saying? But here we know that it's finite. We know a law is prescribed to time for us on this earth where he takes us home. You know what I'm saying? Where we where we die. And to God we return. Inshallah. Right? But I think when you understand that aspect, it's like, what are you doing this life for? If you're doing this life only for worldly ambitions, for trying to gather success success in this world but not doing things with a uh, consciousness of the law and trying to do things for the next life that's where you get corrupted ultimately because who's who's trying to you know you see all these billionaires man trying to do freezer chambers and all this stuff and trying to they just want to stay here so bad you know it's like I believe it's a hadith that says uh, uh, this world is a heaven uh, for a disbeliever and a hell for the believer. You know? It's just... The disbelievers cling on to this. <laughs> you know, and for us, we know it's finite. It, had, it comes to what's in. You know, Allah made us in clay and um, breathe life into us and ultimately we're going to return to the soil. You know what I'm saying? Our, our, our bodies, these vessels that we're in is going to turn into... <laughs> Turn into dirt and soil, and we're gonna be back in the dirt until Allah right raises back up. You know, uh, so we know it's finite, but we know the next life is infinite. So when you're living for that, and you're trying to do good to reach it to the next, to what is infinite, to uh, make it to Jannah, inshallah. I feel like it changes the way you move through this life. What, how much? What time we at? One ten weekly. Yeah, I mean, last thing I was gonna say, you mentioned we were talking about humanity earlier. And I was gonna say part of it when I talked about uh damn I lost I know what I want to say, but okay, we was talking about humanity and you were saying I said I found my humanity in another way in terms of uh me feeling like I'm not me recognizing I'm not in control of this thing, right? Uh but it also what Islam has made me do is like I guess reconnect to that feeling of like submission. Right, because That's when you Islam translates yeah, to. <laughs> when you when you when Submission you to God. when you are moving from the materialist uh, philosophy of matter being primary, of humans being able to manipulate matter to their liking, of all things being knowable, with that you develop a God complex, whether you want to admit it or not. Right, and like so much of what the materialist philosophy has uh, imbued on us in us is uh like this this always needing to be number one always needing to be in me being in control and with that thinking that you can just take 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 and not have to give or that you only have to give under parameters that you see fit right but it's like nah there's just there's a specific way that we've been that we need to give there's a specific way that we need to live uh and us being accustomed with submitting to that Right. Like the West and its spiritual anarchy is all about 
creating a program that fits your desires. This is why so many people pick and choose. This is why I realized choose. I had a problem with it was like, okay, I wanted to believe in God, but I wanted to believe in God my own way. What is that? Some Western shit. Like, what do you mean you want to believe in God your way? <laughs> also, for real shit though. Yeah, like that's sorry, that's what man. I really I was like looking for. Uh, you know, I like well, which one is like for me? And it's like, bro, no, 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 no. Which one is for humanity, bro? You are a part of this thing. You are a part of something, and there is a certain way that you have to do it. Right, but then also it was like once I study Islam, I was like, okay, I already do all half, like not even half. I already do like ninety five percent of this stuff. I just don't pray. <laughs> you feel me? Like yeah. I don't pray this way. I'm I'm already like here. even I when I seen the way you're supposed to clean yourself, I'm like, right, uh, like when you piss, I'm like, this is hella funny. You feel me? Like this is like basic like common sense. I feel like you know, but for some people it ain't. But I'm like, all right, this is like you feel me? How I already bust down? Like, oh, this is like this is easy for me. You feel me? Like this yeah. is like. That's why I like it so I much. It's like being be a good, good muscle, human. man. You feel me? It's just like being like, <laughs> especially when you put like the uh, the struggle against oppression elements into it. Yeah. It's like, bro, this is. But yeah, that's, I think that's what I value so much. If I had to sum it up, it's like Uma. I value prayer. Uh, I value it being rooted in reason and gratitude. I feel like if you got those, like with those pillars, you know, like as a human, if you constantly thinking. And you constantly moving from a place of gratitude, like that's just like a vibration that I just I value so much. Um, so the Uma, prayer, reason, gratitude, submission, detachment, and not pure detachment. Right? Like Islam is also rooted in the material because it says use reason, right? Uh, so like, but it's like a balanced approach. It's not obsession with the material. Mm-hmm. It's not obsession with material. It's how to live in the material world. You know, but it's not an obsession. It's how to it. enact justice in the material world, but understand that it ain't, this ain't it. This ain't all of it. I, I love it. I, 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 I'm I just grateful, bro. And again, like, you know, if we have to look back at the day we met, we have to say we met, you know, for this, for us to be eventually guided to the path of God and the path of righteousness. Uh, and not righteousness in the backwards, holier than thou that the West has presented uh, folks who believe in God to function as, but like actual, like real revolutionaries, real revolutionary humanists, real people who actually want to contribute to the most positive way to this realm. You know, and it's like, who would have thought from that interview? Like, I still got, the, I could pull up the first email I ever sent you. You feel me? Like, that's like, if you would have, that was nine years ago, around, because we we did, we did ABC for a year before we did Hella Black, right? Mm -hmm. 2015. So 2015 was nine years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Is it? My math off. Yeah. Because if it's 2015, yeah, almost nine years ago. Yeah. Yeah, Almost nine years ago that someone would have set us down, like, all right, nigga, in nine years, y'all both finna be Muslims. You ain't finna drink no alcohol. <laughs> I would have never believed it. Because yeah. you couldn't have told me I wouldn't I would have been able to not drink. I wouldn't have believed you. Bro, what what almost stopped me from Shahada was alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Wallahi, bro. Wallahi, bro. That was literally what almost stopped me from like, I can't, Shahada. I can't stop drinking. The same way you had a conversation with Left, I had a conversation with Left. Yeah. I'm a, I believe in God. I believe Prof, Prophet Muhammad said was him as a messenger of Allah. But I don't want to be no fake whistle. I don't know if I can give up drinking and partying. And he said, everything starts with Shahada. Take Shahada and everything else will follow. And you could say, this started with your Shahada. If everything starts with Shahada, I became sober because of seeing you be sober. You feel me? I'm like, okay, if this nigga could do it. <laughs> I for sure could do it. You feel me? Because I, I hadn't <laughs> seen nobody who like did what I did and had the problem that I had. You know, like, okay, well, sure, you can do, you can do it. And then you, you know, so, yeah, bro, so. Alhamdulillah. So, but again, if they would have told us nine years ago, you know. Allah is the best of planners. Like, a man, and that's why it's, it's beautiful and not knowing everything. That's why I be saying, like, all, all things are knowable. Like, sometimes it's just best not to know. Like, what is it's it? It's like mean, we seek know? knowledge from the cradle to the grave, but ultimately, you feel me, when we bow down and, and prostrate to our creator, we're in submission to our our Lord. And part of that submission is knowing that we will never know enough. That Allah knows everything. 
We don't. How Western is it to think that you can know everything? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like people who reject God, they want to become God themselves. Man, you um, gotta stick by who. That's why I said who it came from. You know what I'm saying? Who so, did it come from? Return to the source. <laughs> but you know, return to the creator. You know? But appreciate everybody who's been supporting us. You know, obviously this. Uh, if you think about some of our earlier episodes to now, but well, we had another. We had a Ramadan episode last year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course it's a. Uh, I'm just thinking about our shifts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all listening. And uh, I hope y'all found value. I hope you hear the uh, sincerity in, in both of our voices. And uh, for everyone participating in Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak, Eid Mubarak. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I pray this Ramadan was everything that everyone needed. And it strengthened us. Uh, and allow us to uh, strive for justice uh, in the ways in which law intends, inshallah. Yeah.